Okay, so you want to really take a look at, go back and take a look at the corrective where I have uploaded a corrective work uh, schematic that I've done where you, it's a half corrective, half glamour. And I've only done that because it was a quick demo idea. And then I've uploaded a glamour shot. So I can use that glamour shot. I mean, some people actually use that kind of a shot 30 years later and put it on for their Zoom, right? Like I can tell my kids, you know, you can be whoever you want on the internet. Um, but, but that would be, I feel that would be dishonest for me because that's no, no longer representative, representative of who I am. I mean, my, here's my still my face rectangular shape. I do have a side part, which I have adopted from, uh, I think I had it before that, but anyway. Um, so look at the corrective, then look at the glamour so that you can see glamour and the kinds of research that you need to do. Today, our, our goal is to actually execute two makeups. You have almost exactly two hours right now. So we're gonna look at this thin face again. You should have a schematic. And if you uh, don't have a schematic, um, hmm. okay, so let's see. Sydney, I know Miranda picked hers up. Tyler is printing his out. What are you guys doing, Anastasia and Sydney? Um, I have my printed one right here. Okay, were you gonna come and get some or no? You're good with printing? No, yeah, I'm okay with okay. printing. Okay, great. And you too, Anastasia? Yes, me too. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, I misunderstood. So I prepared them for you, but I will also uh, contact Brinley and Ellie. Ellie, has anyone heard from them? Cause I haven't, I emailed them last night but I haven't heard anything. Okay, all right, let's just take a quick look at um, thin face because I want to just show you, I think I can just show you a quick snip and you'll see what it is. And I want to talk about this idea of value chart. So you should be seeing now the um, schematic and you can see what a dramatic look that is compared to the glamour. So that's why you want to really fill these in because it just helps you identify what you're going to do. And I have, you know, softened this part. This can, I've highlighted this to create greater thin face. So let me go about creating the value, makeup value chart. And this is just a snippet on here. I'll do a demo and then I want to give you, I'm definitely going to demo very briefly. I want to give you a full hour so that you can clean up because remember today at 3.15, we're having the full theater group meeting at 3.15 on Zoom, we're gonna introduce. Okay, so what I want you to do, and this is a homework and I'll write it on a separate page, is I want you to create a value chart from white through mid-tone to black. Using Produce all the faculty, all the staff. all Using everything that you have in your kit and you have about 20 items. You can use your pencils, you can use your face powder. You can use your dry rouge. And I want you to create a hierarchy from light to dark. And I'll show you one that I have as soon as I stop this little screen share thing. Okay, and then I wanna go on to show you this brief uh, demo, which is for thin face. And it's I'll be doing a showing you the Foundation selection. The two should be two degrees away. No, okay. Ideally, let me draw this on the board. I'm gonna. I'll show you that. Here's the one I had, and this is the one I'm gonna use. See, it's darker. Yeah, yeah. Because you said go with the darker foundation. For but I'm gonna show you this difference. So if we okay. have a value chart, this would be more like an intensity chart. We'll go from. So do you know the difference with intensity? That means uh, value is the distance between white and black. Hue is the name of the color at its, at its most pure. And intensity is as color is mixed generally with the color complement, it loses its color saturation. So it becomes a more muted color. It can stay the same value but intensity means the color has been muted, if that makes sense. And then this is a little demo. 
Okay, I have my foundation here. I have my highlight. Pay no attention to my bad spelling. I did that on purpose. And then here it's my shadow. So what I'm talking about is the relationship from here to here, the relationship from the highlight to the foundation. How much lighter is this? If this is three shades lighter than your foundation, then your shadow is three shades darker. So is it six shades darker than the... Highlight? Yes. So as long as the interval between the base and the highlight and the base and the shadow, if these are equal, that's what you're going for, as close to equal as you can get. So, you know, roughly, I mean, you don't need to measure it up against your value chart, but we're just going for the relationship between foundation and shadow and highlight. Okay, any other questions? And I'm just gonna quickly start so I can give you enough time so that we can get to our meeting. <laughs> So this will be the thin face demo based on the worksheet that I have shown you. And uh, okay. all become clear. Remember, we're graded on the preparation and the effort. We're not graded on the execution at this point, right this second. So for fun, I'm going to do half my face and we'll look at half the face after I get it done and you'll see the contrast between what this face looks like and what the highlight and shadow face looks like. So I'm gonna go right down the center. So the, the skin prior to this has been prepared but it does not have foundation on and there is of course eyeliner but you'll see that there is no other preparation uh, that has been pre-assigned. So starting with our usual makeup application, the skin is prepared and then going with the foundation that was a darker foundation selected so that there'd be greater contrast between highlight and shadow. Remember we talked about the fact that we can make the lips narrower. I certainly don't need to do that as I have the skinniest lips in the universe, not quite, but I can, I can even make mine thinner. Again, we're not distorting the skin as we put this on. I'm just gonna foundation on my brows a bit because I want to change the shape. And you can see by doing that, I've made this much lighter. Just want to change the shape a little so a little more angular. So I'm good with half my face. Okay. Again, I'm just going to stop here. I don't need to go all the way down for this exercise. I'm going to start with highlight. I'm just gonna go through and do highlight. I don't wanna get my mask nor my clothing dirty, so I'm wearing my smock. You guys should all have a shirt or something, a man's dress shirt you can buy at the thrift store, turned backwards is kind of great. And yeah, Colby, absolutely put on your wig cap. I'll get mine on too. So if you wanna work along with me, that's fine. And then we'll still have some extra time at the end because I'll move kind of quickly. <coughs> I had a bunch of hats on my hair in the last class. So <laughs> whatever hairstyle I start with, it's not exactly what I end up with. Again, I'm putting all my hair underneath. I am, if you need, if your hands are sticky, you can use your pencil to get your hair under your wig cap. Right? 
and then I'm pulling my wig cap up. See the difference between the edge of my head and my hair? I want the wig cap to be close to my hairline. And then you get a really good clear palette. So for now, I'm just gonna show you the difference of what I've done, just which is just the foundation. No foundation, foundation, so that we see that. Interesting when you cut off one of the banks of lights, how different that is. Okay, next I'm doing highlight. So there's a bit of a warmer effect because the makeup room has incandescent lights, which tend towards a yellow tone. You can see that the foundation is uh, slightly yellower than the, than the natural skin tone. I am looking at what did I do with my brushes? Girl, what have you done with your brushes? Okay, here you go. The end product. So I'm gonna do all highlight first. Now, I just think it's less, it's less daunting. It's the the uh, shadow is more scary. So I'm gonna highlight all these bony areas first with a good swatch. And then I'm really trying to make the nose elongated. So I'm going to take it over the tip and down. Again, I'm doing, I'll do the full. I'm only doing half. So I'm getting the bony area. I'm right on the cheekbone. I'm not going to move to, I definitely don't want to move down to the shadow area. Again, I'm avoiding this, which is my shadow area. And I can do the top edge up here, which is a softer highlight. Remember, this is a soft round at the top of the forehead. You can blend that in. This one you can be a little more dramatic with. So you can see the structure, the bone structure is- I'm keeping my sponge because I just, I don't want to get, this is not a highlight right here. Okay, I will probably put a highlight here under my eye bag. We're going to work on eye bags after we do rounds, so don't get too uh, worked up about it. We'll work on nasal labials also, but I'll just enhance this right here. Because mine are obvious, you may not have that. The nasal labial is the wrinkle that goes from the edge of the nose right. to the that's corner enough of my highlight. I'm going to work with shadow just to get that in. One of the things that I do is I just run the sponge so that it, I'm, I'm not really blending. I'm just touching the edge so that I create a slightly softer edge and the highlight again, is on this part of the cheekbone. Leaving plenty of space for my shadow and I don't want my shadows to touch. So I don't want the highlight and shadow to touch. I want there to be this no man's land of the foundation in between. So I'm gonna put a little here, a little here. And there's a space there that it wants to come up in. Okay, we're not doing a fashion, we're doing a hollow. I'm gonna do under the chin. Eye bag. The orbital fossa, so it looks like I'm, my skin is moving away from that. I'm 
I'm really resisting trying to touch my face. So I want to just use my tools. Okay, and you can soften things out very easily. Do this very gentle shadow here. Again, this one's not, a, not completely as well defined. We would do want to shadow the side of the nose to create that, that very narrow thing. One thing I want to show you is about powder. Okay. So I'm bringing my shadow up a little bit higher because I want to really I accentuate this whole skeletal area here, right? So in other words, this is one where you don't want to be subtle. But I'm tr keeping a space between the highlight and shadow of the foundation so that I'm going to have a no man's land where it can actually live and blend. Some places have a naturally darker shadow, like the nose is pretty well defined. And like Kara said, Kara said it's it is really hard to do it on yourself. You gotta think about that. Okay. I accidentally made a crooked nose, so now I'm going to go back in and straighten that out. There we go. So one thing. So is I'm that alternating my brushes so that I have one for highlight, and one for shadow. I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> I want to get this shape in here. So that that really sinks this into my face. Okay. And then I'm going to powder. And the reason why I want to do this is I want you to see how much goes away. So let's just look at this. The without. And the width. And it seems a bit extreme. Let's powder and see how extreme it seems after powder. Remember with the loose powder, I like to put it onto the uh, back of a paper towel. And then I roll my powder, my brush up, my powder puff in that. We're doing an extreme, go way out there. Remember when you're powdering, you are stippling. Did you fix that up? Also, when you're isolating, um, for my brush. When you're isolating, don't, don't worry about it. So we'll do a little round around the nose. See my nose has almost disappeared now. As I lean back, after I've powdered, you see that 20% at least goes away. It's drastic. It's really drastic. But that's one thing you want to remember when you're working with this. And then you keep, I'm going to keep that going around the nose here. Here, here. You don't have to work with the nasal labials. Um, I'm just doing that because mine are really prominent. I'm going to do a little trick with the just with a brown pencil. It's pretty well. I'll, I'll use that one. So I'm going to do an angular a more angular 
eyebrow, but not so that we not so that it would might be seem odd if we were looking at it without this, but you can see that it's going to create a more angular shape. I'll do a inside the lift liner. Now we could have a glamorous skinny person. You know, I was looking at Karen Carpenter because she died of anorexia. And what she looked like before that and after. She was still performing. That pencil is not on the move. Okay. I made that lip very narrow. So you get the gist of it and you can finish watching this. I'm just going to scroll so that then you get the center part and you see how different one side looks from the other. I can't remember if I'm doing. Okay. So there's the center part and you see that that's definitely okay. questions. What if I made it stiff hair? A more right like this rigid look. Okay. So that would be thin face. And that is under your thin face category. And that's the first thing you're going to work on. And the second one. Oh, I think I just signed out of our whole site. Oh, okay. Uh, and then the second one would be um, the round face and that's a very different look and you can also take a look at that one uh, oh maybe it's at the very end because that was the next one was middle age so let me just take a double look here at it for you but you can go ahead and begin you want to check your um, check your worksheet so that you can look at it and that you can make it as clear as possible. Okay. And for this, are we only doing, um, we're doing half of the no, face? No, you're doing the full face. You're doing full, full face. face. I was doing half just to uh, show you a quick comparison. Comparison, that's right. Gotcha. Okay. So that's the section that is that you can look at. And then you're all set to go. Okay. Questions? All righty. Uh, go ahead and start. And I'm going to go into the other room. And I am going to record there because we're I'm going to uh, work with the first part of a face casting demo. Okay. So I'll see you guys in a little while. I'm just trying to find one more thing here. See if I have the round face up, but go ahead and start. Let me get this there. So I am not seeing my round demo. So I'm gonna, we may have to move on from that. Can't believe I didn't do it. That's so weird. Maybe I just didn't upload it. So I will um, get back to you on that one. Okay. I will see you guys in a little while. Hi, pumpkin. I'm going to pause for just a sec. Where am I? I have to separate them. So this is what we cast with our plaster bandage last time, remember? And I put uh, 
Vaseline underneath to be a release and you can see that it can pop right off. So that was, that's not even something that's rigid. I mean, something that's mobile like your mouth. So that was a great um, mold experiment. And then this is why when this goes on, you want to use multiple layers over top of whatever you're doing so that you get enough of a support because one layer is not sufficient. So you'll need to use, you know, between, I think we at least four layers on this area. So I'm setting up a cradle. So that after I cast my face, you want everything ready so that when you pull it off, you can put it into here. I just called Wally, he's gonna bring me some materials, packing materials so that then when I remove this, I can put it nose down and it will not crush against the bottom and it will sit up in a horizontal position. And I can then have my nose be actually equal. And then I can plaster cast the positive into the negative of the gel tray. So that's getting prepared over here. Remember we had our scale. Now you don't need to use a scale. You know, you can use a measurement device. This is a, this is the measuring cup that we used and I'm Okay. Okay, that's plaster. It's hard to tell. This is the rubber band is so rigid. Okay. So the alginate, this dustless alginate impression cream. That's why I smelled it. It has sort of a minty flavor. Okay. Yours may look like this and may have a measuring device in it. And you'll have to guess how much you're gonna need. Now, another way is that alginate comes is this is called alginate impression cream. This is Magic Cast by um, Krylon. Krylon is a makeup supplier. So, and Krylon's in Germany. Eda, so you may be able to find things like that as well. So here is a large container of this particular product. It's going to go in that black thing over there. And it's exactly the same material. Okay. And this is an older product. Uh, this predates me. So proportion. They do give you a proportion of this. Actually, I could, I'll Xerox this and put it up there for you. And because it, it is, a, there is a whole little handout on three-dimensional reproduction, which I didn't actually know about. So adding more water than suggested will make mixture thinner and slow it down. It will not stick to itself after it started to solidify, unless you use Krylon's bonding agent article number 2703. And then one cup of magic cast is sufficient to make a mold of a hand or forehead and nose. So I'm gonna use one cup, three cups to cover face and neck, okay? So if we're gonna do a whole face, we do two cups. And because they're flexible, you wanna reinforce with a plaster bandage or a shell of plaster. So that's, they give you all this. It's just a quick outline and I'll show that to you. And so I'm going to get one cup of magic cast, one and a quarter cups of water at 70 degrees. That's pretty cold, right? Stir water into, stir water into the gel trait. So I'm going to be putting the water, I'm going to be putting my gel trait in here, and then I'll be stirring my cold water into the gel trait until it gets to the consistency and the smoothness that I want. Then I supply, I'll use the spatula and put it around my face, mix it till it's creamy. And then 
wait till that sets up and then I'll have my plaster bandage immediately ready. That's why I said I'm, I'm recording, but I want to set everything up before I do that. And my plaster bandage is here. What I have is a rolling cart. So you can see I'm working with layers just so that I have it accessible. And when I actually do the casting, I will sit down and I'll lower the computer so that you can see, this, see what I'm doing. So I wanna make sure that I have the plaster bandage pre-cut and I wanna make sure that I have a towel to go around my neck. Guess I'm using this one because the other ones are also very large. So I'm going to make a tube, right? I'll cover that with saran. I'll have it go around the neck, which will stabilize. Okay. And I'll put saran on that. So that's ready. My plaster bandage is here. I want to get out sufficient layers. Remember, we want to go, we want to go crisscross and multiple layers so that it is uh, strengthening. And my bandage is, I have several pieces cut in shapes and ready to go. This is a little bit too big for me. But this is a really big wheel. of plaster bandage, okay? I didn't buy it in cut pieces. I just bought a big wheel of it and then I can cut it as I want. But usually, you know, we're doing multiple people. So I'm just gonna prepare that so that I have some narrow, some nose strips. That feels a little rigid because I will be working with wet hands and I don't want to have anything else get touched. So I'm going to work over here. You'll be able to see me and get my strips completely prepared. When I start, I will not be able to talk to you because I will have my mouth and nose covered. So I'll be thinking about breathing and really focusing on my process. So you wanna dedicate craft scissors to this. You can buy two inch strips too. I don't know which strips you have. These are, bit, these are four inch and these are a bit wide, I think. The two inch are a little more manipulative, a bit easier to manipulate. I'm cutting my two inch strips. Couple of squares. on the bias. And 
and just make sure that you have sufficient materials so that once you start, you don't have to stop and redo materials. Since you're working alone, you don't have that option. If you, we were face casting as a group, you know, we would have one person that would be doing the casting and then saying, I'm going to need more two inch plaster bandages. And then we'd be able to work with that. But we're working on our own. So it's a little bit, it uh, behooves us to be prepared. I'll use a couple of these big squares and see how they work. I am really more accustomed to using the two inch for the face. These are bigger for the arms and legs. Or doing, you know, if you're doing big areas like if you're doing big areas where you're going to reinforce gel trait here, you know, that's, that's very easy. So, okay. And just making sure that my tray is covered with plastic and that my pieces are ready. I need another safety pin. So I'm double checking my supplies. I have my Vaseline, which I think I'll put right here. I don't know, maybe. I have my gel trait. I'm gonna mix it here. I have my spatula ready to go. I have my plaster bandage and I'll get a, I was gonna use my water in here for my plaster bandage. I will sit here this chair and I'm going to get the plastic and put it around my towel around my neck And I'm going to put on my wig cap because I don't want my ponytail to get into this plaster. So, you know me, I'll put the wig cap on for anything. But you saw how great those Speedo swim caps are and you can literally face cast with those, no problem. Okay. I also brought in the plasticine to show you the, um, to show you the mobile clay. So we can look at that afterwards. So let's take a look. I'm gonna use a lower one for the gel trait. Um, this is plaster. Okie doke. Now we're working. Here we go. So I'm going to use gel trait first. We actually used ice to slow down the process. That's going to be for my plaster bandage. I'm sorry if you can't hear me. Here we go. So I'm running water in the sink to make sure that we get the coldest water we can. This is my plaster bandage water container, which I'll put here so that I have it accessible. And this is my gel trait. I will put it on to and get my one cup. Okay. 
Okay, remember what I told you? I'm fully prepared to fail, right? I haven't done this for five years. So I'm fully prepared to fail. And that way it takes kind of the, the scariness out of it for you, okay? So I'm gonna put in one and a quarter cups of water into my one cup of gel tray. I'm gonna put this into a larger container. And because they wear off, we have marked them with Sharpies so that we can actually see it. Yeah, I'm gonna use this one. Okay, where's my saran? Plastic wrap around my towel. Get my towel on my head. Next. I'm gonna pin my saran onto my towel. That will also help my towel wrap stay tight. Okay, once we start going, it'll go really fast. So. I'll just make sure I'm in a good spot. I have no idea what I do to this computer. <laughs> okay. I'm just gonna have one towel in my lap as well. And I'm ready to shoot my gel tray. It would be good to have ice water. So I'll move the chair back so that you can see what I'm doing. I don't think you can see inside because the white is in there. It's white on white, but you'll see the gesture. And I, and I, hmm, I really don't want to do it on top. Of, well, I don't want to do it on, well, that's all right. I don't want to do it necessarily on top of the, Master bandage. So this is like cooking.
don't think I'm going to add more water because I feel like I'll be able to manipulate this. Be great if I had a black bowl, wouldn't it? All right. Just going to try and really get some smoothing going. Okay, so you can see it's pretty smooth. I'm gonna go on pretty quickly, so I'm trying to hold off a second here. Okay. Feels pretty good. Yeah, I think that's okay. So, shall we? Okay, that was not bad. That's why you're letting me fail first. But I didn't get enough on the tip of the nose and I'll show you the... That made me so nervous. <laughs> what? Just watching that made me so nervous. Oh, don't worry, you'll be fine. Okay, so we're gonna do it again.
and I'll have it a better time. I'm not, I don't need as much material, but you, I want to show you that you can see the lip, but because the nose was not secured on the tip, I couldn't get it to stay. So here's my lips. That's the tip of the nose. But the thickness of the quarter inch is pretty good. It got a lot of the skin texture. And the one cup is, you know, there's a lot left. I'm thinking maybe I'll do three quarters of a cup next time. And then see, this is when it comes out. It is, uh, this will be completely dried up by Wednesday. It will not be flexible like this at all. Okay. So uh, I won't have to go through all of that start up stuff. And we will just start right here. It's not scary. The more important thing is uh, it, it is a cool temperature on the face, very sort of like a very cool facial. And you wanna make sure that you don't uh, breathe in. That's the most important thing. When it comes down, don't feel like if you breathe in, you're gonna suck it up through your nose. So that's why you wanna do your mouth first. But I could have, if I tilted my head back slightly and not looked at you and just done it by feel, I think that would have been better. And I wouldn't have had uh, as hard a time getting it over the nose. See what I mean? So if I get a chance, I think, I think tomorrow I'm gonna to be up here by myself. So I might, uh, maybe I'll try and record by myself. Okay, questions? Looks cool, huh? Is it, um, it looked like it might be easier to do with the hands. Is that okay? Uh, <laughs> like, because the fingers are smaller? I don't think it's easier than with the okay. hands. Okay. I, I, okay. So, I think it's really manipulatable and, you know, it comes off really easy. Uh, I've never tried that, you know, to be honest. I've never tried it. So I can't really be give you a good statement, but it's not something that I think I would do. Okay. If I was to, if, to do this again on Wednesday, what I'll do is I will uh, have everything prepared to go when we come into your room and sit here. And then not have to do this. This was great though, because this does give you something against which you can kind of rest your head a bit. So that part's great. Um, so is, is that thing only for support? It's, you know, it's also, you remember you said, you oh, that guy got his all down his shirt. Mm -hmm. It's so that you don't, that doesn't run down your shirt. Okay. But it does, it does really support and it does help that way. And it keeps your clothes clean. Okay. So that's it for today. That's why today is kind of funny. But anyway, we'll get more going. And tomorrow, on Wednesday, I'll be able to do the whole thing. Awesome. And just be right. sure, really be careful because I, I'm looking. Um, be careful because you don't want that to get in your eyes or stuck on your lashes. That's one of the reasons why you really shouldn't have on makeup. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, hindsight, 2020. Okay, guys. Okay, cool. thanks. Wednesday. Thank you. Bye. Little magic cast thing as well. Okay. But you may want to have a. I, I mean, I realize I I had talked about having a notepad, and you may want to have one just so that you can. There may be other information you want to get. Perfect. All Thank right. you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, let me see how you're doing. Have you finished your uh, thin face? Yeah, I finished. Okay, so um, you do want to look at the hair. 
as well. And um, let me take a, let me take uh, and you individually, okay? So, Anastasia, it, interestingly, your your right cheek seems to have a better line here in the front than the left. The left seems a little smoother. See how the right has a bit more of an angle? Ah, uh, this one. Yeah, see how different it is? The highlights down a little low on the left. It should come up. It shouldn't run over the edge of the cheekbone. It should stay up on the cheekbone. Remember that area between highlight and shadow needs to stay neutral. You don't want those to mix together because it gets muddy. Right, okay. And you could then finish off with a hair part and then uh, take a selfie. And then I'm going to show you the round. Sydney, I'm going to have you be up next. Oh, I need your face. Oh, sorry, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> totally OK. I love it when people do that because I'm not the only one. You know, it's just it's so <laughs> easy to just make a mix up of everything yeah so um all right your nose what I, what, what, what comments do you have oh i was just gonna say i um used my own contour and then i did it like this and then i sort of went right here but you said not to go past the cheekbone but i've seen like shading right here and it makes I don't know. I just thought I would try it. So I don't know. If that... Talking about the highlight. Oh, the highlight. Highlight, uh, it, not on your face, but on another face, the highlight was coming off of the cheekbone into the fleshy area, which would be a shadow. Okay. So right. The shadow does come down. You can put it down the face like that. And then you would want to highlight the, the part of the nasolabial. The nose is working very well. Don't you feel you can really get the three dimensionality of the nose? You haven't worked much in the, on the forehead. You want to make sure that the whole face works together. And also the chin, uh, it looks like there's a highlight here. Yeah. Which creates a roundness and you want to create a narrowness by doing, you can do a, a shadow and then a two highlight. But we'll okay. get to the round, you'll see how that works. So okay. go ahead and do a hairstyle that emphasizes thin and take your selfie. Okay, thank you. Tyler, are you ready or Miranda? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. There she is. Okay, so uh, how much of it went away when you powdered? Um, a, a lot. I used a fair amount of powder. Um, but it's important to realize that, you know, that's when you're working in certain things, like if you were doing a musical on the Garvin stage, you would need a fair amount of powder. So mm -hmm. that shows the kind of contouring that you need to do underneath the powder to make it effective. Right. Right. And that's one yeah. of the reasons why when I have you do this, I have you exaggerate slightly so that you can really powder and then you can see what happens because, and again, this is, you're going to find, all of you will find that either you're going to lend, your face will lend towards a round naturally or lend towards a thin naturally. Mine mm -hmm. always has been bony and yours might also be round, but I will show you a quick video of my round just so you can see it and it's very funny. But yeah, so, so powdering, know how much you need to do beforehand. And then after you powder, remember from our very first corrective, you can go in and shadow again on top of your powder with the Ben Nye because it will not get muddy on top of the powder. Okay. So, but you're in the right places. I see your highlight. You could actually a stronger highlight down, right the, down the center of the nose, right? And mm -hmm. it, narrower and then bring your shadow up to narrow it down and okay here yeah but good job i think you did a nice job thinning the lips thank you that's really, that's really impressive hey tyler you're up all righty uh can you guys hear me yeah we can hear you open this up full size there we go um, so even after using the powder, I might have gone a little bit too exaggerated. I, I don't think. know. No, yeah. because remember, you're looking at basically less than three feet away. Right? Right. 
you're looking at up close and on any, even the smallest stage, it would be close to 10 feet. So there you go. And when you back up just a little, and it's always good to go back and see how you look at a distance. The, even at, at that, remember it's double the screen and to back again. So when you are back five feet, it's about 10 feet. It really, you could even do even a little more. So you're doing, you're doing well. I have more on my left side than I do on my right side. I can tell. I also try to do a bit for around the jawline and near the chin. Uh, I don't know if the highlights are standing out very well. I went, followed the video, highlighted like the nose, the right. high up on the bone for the cheekbone. And I think I did right in between the, the two bumps I have for the chin. You want to mm -hmm. highlight your jaw edge give yourself a stronger jaw here and that would be highlight and uh, it turns sideways turn sideways and then other side okay this side has a little bit better highlight on the jawline part of it is you're fighting your beard which has a natural shadow hmm. right so that's going to always be tough for men because they tend to have a natural shadow there but this one you can actually you've got the highlight there and then you could you shadowed underneath which gives a little more your highlight on your phone, touch where you put it. Um, okay, so that's- Right about here. Okay, so go a little bit lower and think about where is the closest place to the mirror of, on your cheekbone? Look at straight in the, I guess you can look straight in the camera, look straight in the camera for now. And then touch your cheekbone, just okay. with your fingers, both sides. Okay, can you feel the edge of your eye socket up here? Yeah. Okay. And then slide down and then you feel a shape like this, a curved shape mm -hmm. and where the shape comes out farthest. And then you feel the shape curve back in, right? And then when you have it come down, it'll curve back in right here. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. So this is below the cheekbone. Yes. And you can touch your teeth. So your cheekbone is up higher. So part of it is always just locate where is that on my face? And that's your highlight, yeah. And actually it's not a bad idea to um, highlight and even take a picture and see what it looks like. Sorry, I have face casting. I did gel trait on my face. So that's what is in the middle of the video. Okay, so take a selfie, you might, see about doing a center part on your hair and see if that helps emphasize that shape. Yeah, I did have earlier, I had closer to a center part. I don't have any, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, comb? No, I, I have a comb, just I don't have anything to like pull my hair back. Um, huh. um, well, you can put it down. I mean, it could be down with a center part like this. Yeah. I had that earlier and then it looked like it was working out pretty well. Well, it's, you know what, it's better in the front, the very front. This is being cooperative, but the side that wants to go back to its normal place. Okay, excellent. I want to just show you this quick uh, video and I think I have it pulled up right in back. So we're going to take a look at this round face so that you can uh, see how different it is. And the end is sort of hilarious. And we'll see if at the end of this, if we have enough time, if not, we can start here next time. And then we'll go on to middle aged. So now you should be seeing the zoom. So as per usual, I will unpin Kara and pin myself. Um, I will start with foundation. And as I said before, now I have the lights on, but my face is very angular. So it's- but We don't see the actual video because we can hear it. I see your- You can't see- 
Is that what the you're documents, saying? Documents, the folders with the documents. What about you guys? Can you see? No, you you? Able to see it. Okay. Can you see it, uh, Tyler? We no, can, we, we can't. could see the files, but we just couldn't see a video. Yeah, we saw we saw the files. Look at the file and see if I can get that because I don't have time to convert it. Just a second. I maybe I can do it. Get it in quick time. Let me just try this because I am seeing the whole thing. Oh no, that's not what I want. Okay, I think I need to do something called, dude, there's this app I have to open, I think. Okay, just a second, you guys. You guys can take your makeup off and then let me just, uh, I, I, it's playing okay on my end, but that's not clearly not helpful for you. So let me just see what I can do about finding this and see if I have it on the YouTube. Because I didn't, didn't find it. Okay, I may have to do this. So this is gonna take a little bit longer than I thought. So let's just, I can uh, show you. And I thought I had the, so go ahead and still clean up and get completely ready for the next thing and I'll start this. Sorry, I'm just doing work on my end and then I'll, you guys just keep working on cleaning up and, and, uh, and if we just get the first one done, that's okay. So we'll just keep going here. Oh, you know what, I can pause the recording. Oops, not oh, you know what? I need to pause. Yeah, that's sort of silly. Okay, I think I can go back to awesome pause. Okay, so now are you looking at a YouTube? Yes. Okay, and does anyone need captioning? I think we're good. Okay, so we'll take a look and we'll just have this. This is like the first. So time. as per usual. Uh, 
I will unpin Kara and pin myself. Um, I will start with foundation. And as I said before, now I have the lights on, but my face is very angular. So it's, it is really fighting against it, but I can see. I'm gonna put on foundation in a minute, but I'm going to see exactly where, and you'll be able to see when I trace this, where I'm gonna put my lines. So you can see there is a round ball here. There is, there is a cheek here that I can highlight. And it's really important when you highlight this cheek that you highlight that place that's closest to the mirror, okay? See when I do that? Right in the center. And you can see I'm getting a shine from the light. That's where my highlight's gonna be. Same thing, soft highlight up here. I'm gonna round my brows. I can round my eyeliner. I can make a round chin right here, okay? Try different face movements to see where you're gonna work. This is if I'm gonna make a monkey. Don't be afraid to really explore the movement of the face, okay? That's one thing we can do in a makeup class that you can't really ever do with an actor. You know, it's very hard for them to separate, especially when you're seeing them in relationship to a character, their head space is the character. This is an exploration space. So we're gonna do everything. Um, can I ask, I'm trying to find the instructions, like the written ones. I'm having trouble navigating on my Zoom or my um, Canvas to find it. Can and also, you know what, Chanel, where is she? I, she said she was having a hard time uploading, so we we're going to talk about that. Okay, uh, let me, if you go to your modules. Okay, modules, modules. This will be the same for you guys. It's where the... And then if you look at modules, is. I'm just going to do this without screen sharing. Okay. And you go to the... Week three and four. Week three and four. Okay. Okay, just a second. I'm gonna make up application sequence. Okay, we're gonna move on from this. Foundation than you tried before. Okay, just explore, keep exploring the three, the three foundations and just say, well, if I do this one, I did that one before, am I gonna get more contrast or less contrast? So if you have it down, Get your foundation on so that it is even. I have a very clean sponge. Oh, right, I remember what happened. I put them over here. Okay, so again, you're gonna put your foundation on not by pressing on your face, but more by smoothing it on the face. And you wanna get it all over the face. A nice thin, even coat to create that palette that we wanna work with. I have made my computer a little too high. And so I'm gonna move this, sorry you guys. What I did before was, it was, I was able to look in the mirror as well as at you. So I could look in the mirror above my computer. So let me just change my station a bit. It's a very elaborate system of an apple box and a tow tray. Whatever works, but now I can see myself instead of just seeing in the computer. It's very difficult to do the makeup in the computer, not appropriate at all. So I'm going to get that on. I'm gonna try and, I'll have to use a makeup wipe and get rid of my eyebrows. 
not going to worry too much about my eye bags. I don't care about them at this point. I'm not doing any kind of beauty makeup. Not really a corrective. So if your hair starts popping out, you can do um, this idea of using a brush, the end of a brush to get it in so that your hands don't actually have to skin it. So that it's nice and flat. I don't need to block out my whole lip, just the outside edge. So when, a, when applying highlight for this one, would you recommend a sponge instead of a brush? Because it's round and not a you can. angle? Both. Yeah. Okay. Certainly try that. I will demo that right up because, well, especially on your cheek. when you The idea of brush and sponge, Kobe, is, is that I like the sponge. But sometimes it's too big for an area, like maybe it's too big to do down the end of my nose, right? Yeah. So this, the sponge is great because you get a fast application. You know, that's, that's terrific. Remember, if you ever are doing makeup on someone and they happen to wear in contacts, you need to check with them before you apply the makeup so that you are not hurting them in any way. I'm going to use my extra light highlight just here. I'm going to keep it round. Again, I'm going right on that sweet spot. And I can bring it down a little. You can see the difference between the two sides already. So this is putting- And then I'm gonna round this. Just keeping it round. Keeping this round. Wow, that's already made a difference. Yep. The great thing is, I'm just doing the highlights so I can get a good expression first <clears throat> so i don't need to do highlight in here necessarily you know uh i'm just not going to shadow in there i'm going to try just uh powering up the corner of my brush or the edge to so do down my nose and create that wider nose effect. Okay, so that is really just highlight. Super easy. Now I'm gonna make my eyes sag over. And then to do my, my uh, shadow, I'm going to use a brush. I feel like I need a little more control. And this brush is a number, that's a 12. I like it. So I will use my inside of my wrist as a palette of what I'm doing. And this is, um, this is flattening. I have powered up my brush and I'm flattening it so that I get the narrowest possible edge right here so that I can create this line. And I'll, with my sponge, smooth that out. So creating a wider nose tip 
and a rounded nose tip. This is emphasizing the roundness up on the top. And bottom. Now you can see the tip coming out. <laughs> then you start laughing. Because you look so funny. I'm going to be a dwarf. Now instead of grumpy, I'm going to be happy or sneezy or whatever. Okay. And let's do this side. Soften, you can just take a, a, a sponge and just gently put it into your foundation, right? Not really doing much. You're really, really using a light hand on that. Okay. I'm going to powder. I always forget to bring my paper towel over here. I'm going to do my round brows, my round eyeliner, and my round lips. But remember, I'm powdering because I'm on my cream makeup now. And it's coming over a little far. And I want to make this so it's not as movable. Okay, that's better. So look at a distance so that you can see what's going on before you uh, powder if you need to make some corrections. And then after I powder, I'm going to go in with my white and kiss that, that uh, cheek right in the biggest part of the cheek so that it sticks out. Remember, the whole point of that is it sticks out. The thing that's closest to the mirror is the thing that you want to have be highlight. Oh. Now I can just touch. And then I can put my dry rouge on top, right? Because it's dry. Just to give a little more punch. To this, I'm adding a little tiny bit of white. Now remember, your nose is going to have the biggest highlight because it always does. It's the most three-dimensional part of your face. Technically, if you're powdering over white, I would use white. You can use baby powder, cornstarch, works. And you can use neutral set. Some of you have neutral set in your kit. Okay, let's get some round brows going. And I'm gonna do brows in brow shape. So I will do Uh, short, st short strokes, but rounding it. Oh, that one's a little wild. Got to fix that up. See how this one's so much better? That one's like insane. Get rid of that thing. Help. That's my witch coming back at me. Always can happen. So, and then I want to do round liner so it's heavier in the center. OK, 
Okay, see how that's different than this one? And I'll do it underneath. We talked about putting white on the table. I think that was Chanel or uh, Sarah talked about that as well. I'll do that and you can see what it looks like. And better with a pencil. Getting some shape. So shortening or reducing the, width, around the, lip. the width, reducing the width of the mouth and then enhancing the cupy bow in the front. So drawing the liner between on the top side of- And then we'll put some color on. The lip pigment and the skin pigment. And then there is an, a big finale I put on, I I have on a red color shirt. Color. Okay. I'll see it in a minute. I've used this color before. So it seems a little grotesque at this point. And when you think about characters like Lucille Ball, who is sort of a round character, there is a slight grotesqueness to the character. I just can't, I gotta get some. My lips are so dry, I have to get some chapstick on there. You see, I want to touch, but I'm going to avoid and just blend this. There we go. Now I can do a couple of crazy things with my hair. And a lot of people do something like put their hair into uh, Princess Leah buns. where you are creating a round shape. Or a who, if you're at Universal and you have to be in the who Christmas show and they actually have prosthetic noses, but you are creating a different round hair look. Get another one on there. I never do this. <laughs> I do it once a semester. Actually, I've never done this. I usually just do ponytails. I just thought this would be fun. When in doubt, get a bobby pin. Okay.
I can have them both in about the same place. That would be good. Take this off. Get the bright color back. Do a round neck. There's my silly girl. So even though I've cut my lips off to here, then you can even be realistic. I mean, nothing different than Schitt's Creek. Remember when last night when they won all their awards? Yeah. So this eyebrow is really successful. I could, I could fix this one up. Maybe it needs to come in a little bit. So you need to kind of look at what you need to do. I can also brush. This is just a spoolie so that I can brush my eyebrow in place. And uh, I do love that eyebrow. I have to figure out how to get this one there. So questions? Okay, so that is giving us a finish look and better. Now I can do this brush. While it seems. And before you begin, questions. Let's start. Okay. There we go. So I will embed that into the Canvas page. It, it actually already is in there. And you can see that while it is um, somewhat extreme, if we, if you didn't know me, and you saw that crazy person on the street, you know, you might think that that was, you know, Betty from somewhere and sorry, I have face casting on. Um, and that would be a very different kind of character. So just something to be aware of. So next time we'll do round face. So do your, do your worksheets and in the canvas page, we have a good, um, in the module, we have a good outline drawing of what it, where it is you want to highlight, okay? So for some of you, that's gonna be really easy. For me, I sort of look a little scary and old and weirdly round like I'm a cartoon character. All right, questions? Because we have five minutes. No, looking forward to it. It'll be fun and crazy. And then this leads us into our middle aged and then we're gonna start working in color because all of these things lead to clown. And clown, we can do these things with color. So we'll have, after this we have middle aged and then we have clown. So it'll be very interesting. All right, you see how that sequencing works. Okay, all righty. Very good, you guys. Nice work today of your thin face. And we'll start with round on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. I will pause, stop the recording.